In the previous video, we learned about how the high concentration of anesthetic agents in the vaporizing chamber is diluted with fresh gas to output a gas mixture that is safe for clinical use. In this video, we are going to discuss the method used to improve the efficiency of vaporization in the vaporizing chamber to ensure consistent vaporization and even mixing of the anesthetic and the carrier gas. The methods used are flow over, bubble through, and injection technique. A flow over vaporizer is designed to efficiently convert liquid anesthetic agents into vapor by utilizing the flow of a carrier gas, typically oxygen or nitrous oxide. The carrier gas is introduced into the vaporizer, flowing over the surface of the liquid anesthetic agent. As the carrier gas flows over the anesthetic, it picks up vaporized anesthetic molecules, creating a mixture that is delivered to the patient. The vaporizer incorporates wicks made of porous material that extend into the liquid anesthetic. Due to capillary action, the liquid anesthetic rises into these wicks significantly increasing the surface area of the liquid that is exposed to the carrier gas. This enhanced surface area improves the efficiency of vaporization allowing more molecules of the anesthetic to escape into the gas phase. The design of the vaporizer often includes baffles or spiral tracks that direct the flow of carrier gas. These structures lengthen the pathway of the gas over the liquid anesthetic giving it more time and surface area to interact with the anesthetic and further enhancing vaporization efficiency. The Tech Vaporizer uses a wick system for consistent anesthetic delivery. In contrast the Goldman bottle flows directly over the liquid surface, which can be less efficient, especially at lower flow rates. In devices like the copper kettle vaporizer, carrier gas is allowed to bubble through the liquid anesthetic. This method, known as the bubble through system utilizes agitation and splashing to create smaller bubbles thereby increasing the surface area of the gas liquid interface. The size of the bubbles, depth of the liquid, and the velocity of the carrier gas flow all influence the vaporizer's output. The diagram on the left shows the complex design used in Tech 6 Desflurane Vaporizer which is an injection type of vaporizer. The diagram on the right is the simplified version to show how by injecting a known amount of anesthetics or vapor into the gas stream, the desired concentration of output can be achieved. We will discuss this complex diagram when we see Desflurane Vaporizer. Now let's move into another way a vaporizer is classified, that is based on their location. Essentially there are two possible locations for a vaporizer within an anesthesia breathing circuit. The vaporizer can be inserted into the fresh gas line that supplies the anesthesia breathing system known as out of circuit. Alternatively it can be integrated directly into the breathing system itself referred to as inside circuit. A vaporizer inside circuit is positioned within the breathing circuit itself. This means the anesthetic vaporization process occurs directly within the gas flow that goes to the patient. In this setup such as in a copper kettle, the vaporizer is placed downstream of the fresh gas flow meter and directly in the patient's breathing circuit. The patient's respiratory efforts or mechanical ventilation drive the fresh gas through the vaporizer where it picks up the anesthetic agent. The VIC system can provide a high concentration of anesthetic gases quickly because it is directly in the circuit. It is generally simpler and may be easier to use in some scenarios. But concentration of the anesthetic gas can vary with changes in ventilation parameters such as respiratory rate and tidal volume. 
It may be less precise in controlling the exact concentration of the anesthetic agent compared to vaporizer outside systems. It increases resistance to the breathing circuit too. A vaporizer outside circuit is positioned outside the breathing circuit, meaning the anesthetic vapor is mixed with the carrier gas before it enters the patient's breathing circuit. In this setup such as the one found on modern anesthesia machines, the vaporizer is located upstream of the breathing circuit. Fresh gas flows from the anesthesia machine through the vaporizer where it picks up the anesthetic agent and then this mixture enters the breathing circuit that delivers it to the patient. The ventilator out of the system provides more consistent and precise control over the concentration of anesthetic gases delivered to the patient. It is less affected by changes in ventilation parameters ensuring a more stable delivery of anesthetic concentration. Its location out of the breathing circuit significantly reduces the resistance to flow within the circuit. The only drawback is that the system can be complex and may require more initial setup and adjustments compared to VIC systems. However, the lower resistance to flow and more reliable performance of VOC systems make them the preferred choice in modern anesthesia practice.